Vincent would not last long in Auvers sur Oise. He continued painting right until the very end, though, making some of his most experimental works, including a piece called Tree Roots, which is believed by some to be his last ever painting. He would die on July the 29th, 1890, of a gunshot wound. She had a little feeling of guilt after Vincent died, and she said, but we didn't say anything wrong, did we? No, we did, Theo said. It was not our fault. It was in his head, and we did not cause it. Theo van Gogh would also be dead within six months. It must have been incredibly stressful for Theo, being the, his benefactor, making sure that he was funded, also being his pretty much sole confidant to all of the highs and lows of Vincent's work and mental state. Of course he was heartbroken and he, was, he had lots of grief and it was very hard for him and he was sad and he was everything. But still, he had a second stage of syphilis too. No doubt, the emotional shock of losing his brother, who he'd been so close to, um, must have also exacerbated his condition. Within a few months, he went totally mad. And if you want to have uh, an uncomfortable night, read the report of the, uh, the doctor, of Theo, because it was a very hard, very hard time for him. Following the death of her husband and brother-in-law, Joanna had to make use of the limited reputation Vincent had built up amongst his fellow artists. Following the death of Theo and Vincent, Johanna really rallied to make sure that his art became known. And her house became a sort of hub for people interested in Van Gogh, and she really, really pushed him. It didn't take her long. Soon, Claude Monet came to see Van Gogh's works and announced his surprise that a man who loved flowers and light so much could have been so unhappy. Thank you.